Amelia Earhart. No. She's amazing. Okay. She did crash. Jesus. That guy fucking is a ride or die for his chick. Yeah. He, I think he should get a vote. I think we should take Stebbin over Oprah no, for National women. Women's Month. This is women. Yeah, but he does kind of play the part a little bit. 100%. <laughs> this episode of Two Bears, One Cave is sponsored by Kettle and Fire Bone Broth. Made with all organic ingredients and bones from 100% grass-fed cows and free-range chicken, Kettle and Fire is available at almost any grocery store in the country. It is the cleanest and highest quality bone broth on the market, and it's great for fasting support. For a limited time, you can save 25% off your entire order when you go to kettleandfire.com slash bears and you'd code bear, use code bears at checkout. That's kettleandfire.com slash bears with code bears at checkout for 25% off your entire order. Uh, you were pulled off stage last night and I said you, want, you said you wanted to say something to the audience. <laughs> I just want to apologize. Uh, <laughs> You never know what's going on mm -hmm. behind the scenes. And uh, I don't want to get into details, but we're dealing with some real tragic news. And I was trying to process it my way. In your family. <laughs> that's a, that's a... You got to have a good fucking out. You got to have a good You got to think of your excuses. Can I tell you, I think my anxiety gives me powers. And I'll tell you why. I think I have superhuman powers. Because I was on the flight. So does my eight-year-old. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> he actually really does. <laughs> I really think I do. I was on the plane yesterday with Leanne. Didn't drink on the flight. Definitely drank at dinner last night. Let's talk about my blood work later. Okay. And, uh, and I was feeling movements in the plane that she wasn't feeling. And I realized. Big plane, small plane. Big plane. Uh, uh, Delta. I don't like flying Delta. The actual the airline gives you. I don't you like a flying Delta. Can I tell you what's crazy? Really? In, you know, Japanese airlines called Japanese airline, but that's probably not what they call it. They probably call it like something. They probably just call it the airline. Or, yeah. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, it's kind of cool that we force them to say Delta, like in their language. They have to go Delta. Delta. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, but I noticed that like that's your that's your problem airline Delta. I don't like. I mean, I I, I grew up flying Delta. I just find that. Um, Everything looks very Swedish. Like it, everything's like ergonomic. Okay. Everything's like very format, very like blue and red. And, mm -hmm. and I miss the Delta days when they had that fucking hot lady. Redhead? Oh my God. Yeah, I DM'd her one time. Doug, you, <laughs> <laughs> you DM'd her? Yeah, I was like, you do good work. <laughs> Can you pull up a picture? She was the hottest no, I'm sorry. It was public. It was public. I, I messaged her. She is so, she changed fucking, yeah. I mean, she well, was you know what fist. it is. It's a, it's a nod back to the way flying used to be. Where which you smack them on the ass. Yeah. Where, where the airline was like, you know what people want to look at? Attractive people. Yeah. Attra so, you know, it was the good old days where they would weigh them and they, you know, make them dress up. <laughs> And weigh them. Yeah, they did. They're <laughs> they like, did. you better not be over 125. So now you now you can only get that internationally. Like when you go, when you yeah. fly Cathay Pacific or or, or Emirates or, or Japanese airlines, like uh, they still enforce that. They're like, yeah, you will hire you. Stay hot. Yeah. And then here you got big old Sally waddling down the fucking hitting you with her hips. And she's, uh, you know, it's she's she's in a mood, and you're like, I gotta fucking deal with you. Uh, yeah, the what this, when was, did, this is what it used to be. When do you think the first mood? Hey, Happy Women's Month. Um, Happy Women's happy Month. Happy International <laughs> Women's Month. <laughs> when God. do you think attitude showed up with flight attendants? It's definitely been like it. It probably, you know, there was probably a couple that gave it a shot in the seventies or eighties that got, they were like, love. that's when they used to like, yeah, you're out of here. And then, you know, uh, fuck you tried to, they probably tried to sue and they're like, get the fuck out of here, yeah. you know? And then it's probably like shifted for real. I would say in the nineties, probably in the nineties into the, into the early two thousands when it became like, it's a, you know, you don't have to look a certain way. That's when people started to go like, Oh, but you're only hiring hot people here. Cause we know somebody also that, for a totally different business that only hires uh, attractive women to work there. And, um, Is that me? Huh? <laughs> 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 no, but it is fucking hilarious. All right, I'll say it, but you, you got to cut it out. 
Uh, uh, <gasps> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Like, oh, that's so fucking funny. But that is like a throwback thing. Yeah, that's a, and you know what ends up happening? You take note of it, right? When you're at, when you go to this business, you take note of it, and then like I don't know, everybody seems to like not complain. <laughs> They're just like, oh, okay, this yeah. is what it is. There's no fly in the ointment. No, there's. Uh, it's just. That's so funny, yeah. I, 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 I would love just one throw. They should do throwback flights, one throwback flight where it's 1950s. Where they, but they advertise it. Yeah, you and they you can smoke on the plane. Flight? Yeah, you can smoke on the plane, and it's, you got to wear a suit. That's another thing. You got to, you have, if you do, you don't get one or the other. You got to do it all. You got to do it all. Yeah. God, I would love to do one of those. People had like self respect on those flights. That's when planes went down all the time too. Did they? Yeah, I mean, I've been watching a lot of airplane crash videos. Why? You hate that shit. I know, but I, I, I got cocky. I thought my anxiety was good, and then I got on the plane yesterday, and I was noticing when the plane would move, and Leanne didn't even notice it. And I went, I wonder if I'm like more tuned in yeah, because I've, I have my anxiety. I have flown in so many situations where it, you know, there's real malfunctions, and I don't even get like a little bit of anxiety. I thought of you on my flight coming in because it was really bouncy coming into Austin yeah. yesterday. And I, I don't have a problem landing. I, bouncing landing doesn't bother me. It's always takeoff. 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 And the idea of having to sit for two and a half hours fucks my head up. In a tube. In a tube. And that I just start going like, what am I going to fucking do? And that's why I, I almost drank at takeoff. And then I was like, I don't want to drink on, on a plane. I'm healthy right now. I'm the healthiest I've ever been. And I was like, I don't. This is what will kill me: is drinking all day on a fucking plane, and then going out to dinner and drinking at night. So you didn't drink on the plane. I did not drink on. And the it plane. was turbulent. It was turbulent coming out of L.A. And it was turbulent. It was fine the whole flight. Turbulent coming in. But, but you, I, did, you weren't anxious in the turbulence, or you were not landing because I feel like we're already on our way down. But I'm saying on the way up, you were. Yeah, you were nervous. Bad. And I, I mean, it was really bad. I started sweating, and I was shaking, and and I go this. I looked at Leanne. I go, this is fucking physical. Like I'm not. I you I go, I'm not gonna drink. I'm not doing this as a put on. Yeah. So like, hey, look, I should get a drink. I'm like, I'm not drinking, but look at this. This is real. Yeah. She's like, it's so funny, I don't even feel it. Yeah. And I was like, Yeah, I, I feel it. It's 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 coursing through my fucking veins. Sure. But I wonder if that because I wondered, you know, I wonder sometimes if I'd be able to do, dodge a punch. I've do, I've dodged a couple punches that I saw. Dodge coming. a punch. Yeah, because my anxiety is so high. Yeah. I wonder if that's like a superpower, is if like if like uh like you're just yeah like if i always like when i i I regret speaking like this already and i haven't even said it yeah but when i hung out with nate diaz shane gillis said he was gonna fuck me up he was like just you know they're gonna jump you jump you yeah and i was like he's gillis i don't know he i he he likes heightening the fucking anxiety too yeah yeah and so i was really nervous i was very terrified that, that i was gonna be that i might get jumped and then i thought now's the time i find out if i can duck a punch i was like how badass if i get if i'm gonna get a slap in the face and i just go and i duck it and i go oh and i find out then well here's the thing they're definitely gonna do that now no now, now that you put that out there you're gonna get no, slapped nate and i are buddies are you nate still and gonna I are get buddies. Nate I, I and believe I are buddies. you i believe you nate but... and i are buddies okay i think you're gonna get I'm, slapped I'm, I'm not getting slapped i don't want to okay. get slapped that's why i don't I'm, I'm done talking about mma fighters oh are you yep nothing but respect Good. And you know what? I cuz I always thought it it's it's all jokes, you know? And I told Nate that. I go every I always make jokes about the guys who get it. The yeah. guys who get comedy, I make jokes. I made jokes about Connor and Nate and Izzy. Izzy. Yeah. And but then there are a couple guys that don't get the jokes. Yeah. That really don't get jokes. Sure. And so I would never so I was like, you know, I'm going to just stop talking altogether. And now you're watching all these YouTubers get fucked up by MMA fighters. Yeah. And you're like, "Oh, that I could totally see you talking uh, some wild shit to Sean Strickland and then being like, ha right? I would never, never say anything to Sean Strickland. I would never say anything to Sean Strickland. You, oh, so you learned your I, lesson. Actually, actually, Sean Strickland's a no-fly zone for me. Okay. I actually have nothing but absolute respect for Sean Strickland. <laughs> no, I'm being serious because I know that Sean Strickland, if you said something even misinterpreted, yeah. he is a guy that has no problem slapping you in front of everybody. <laughs> he is, he is, he is alpha 
male. Like yeah. he is the dude in school that you either friends with or you're not friends with. Yeah. And I want to be friends with him. Okay. I like Sean Strickland. Okay. <laughs> His interview with Theo is fucking amazing. I like everything about him. He okay. always has a gun on him. Apparently, yeah. like, do you see him at the surprise party? Uh-uh. His wife threw him, or they threw him a surprise party, and he pulled a gun out. At the surprise party? He was like, whoa, you don't throw a... He he walked into his house and a fucking ton of people just pulled his gun out. I was like... (laughs) Sean Strickland is fucking old school. Yeah. Old school man. Mm -hmm. It's like like that Chris Rock joke. Yeah, but can you kick my ass? Yeah, can you kick my ass? Yeah. (laughs) Sean Strickland is... I I love you, Sean. I have nothing but respect (laughs) for you. Let's let's get... Let's wait in a whole other direction. Let's let's go... Let's go (laughs) MMA fighters that we have nothing but respect for. Oh, fucking all of them, dude. What are you talking (laughs) about? I know, but there's a... Like, like, uh, like you... Like, I'm not... I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. I remember saying... It's just like a wild cat exhibit at the zoo. That's who they are. They're just fucking... Pumas and panthers and tigers and lions. You just got to be like, oh, it's cool to watch from over here. That's, yeah, that's it's what cool it is. to get close to them sometimes. Yeah, yeah. But I'm like, yeah, yeah. It can always turn. It it can. Like we you know somebody goes like, no, they're cool. Like with a with like a tiger, it's yeah. cool. I work with it every day, and you're like, yeah, no, no, I see. That's cool. Over there is fine. You for, and I think you forget how big they are. Like like even just shaking Nate Diaz's hand. Like I remember I was I said. I, when I was in Ireland, I was like, let me see, Con-, like joking, you know, yeah. trying to sell tickets. Yeah. Let me see Conor McGregor. Yeah. And then I saw him mm-hmm. and I felt his shoulder. Yeah. And it was like, it was like, you know, it reminded me of Rogan's shoulder, just this fucking lump. Boulder. A yeah. boulder. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. That hand thing too, when we were in Vegas and I met, uh, we were together when we met uh, Johnny Manziel. This episode is brought to you by the Spring Cleaning Champions, Manscaped. This season, make sure to groom your carpets and the drapes with the leader in below-the-waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush with Manscaped's Lawn Mower 5.0 and watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Embrace the season and join in the 10 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with our special offer. Go to manscaped.com and use code BEARS for 20% off plus free shipping. Trust me when I say the only thing I will take downstairs to my junk is the Lawn Mower 5.0. I... Do not trust other ones. I have cut myself before, and I'm promising you this thing is amazing. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra is their fifth generation trimmer, with fe- which features two interchangeable next gen skin safe blade heads, a standard one for taking a little off the top, and a new foil blade to go smooth wherever your heart desires. It also features a dual LED spotlight to guide you through the darkest winter debris. Navigate with confidence in your delicate areas. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code bears at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code bears at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. Perhaps you've noticed a coworker cracking a tall boy in your 9 a.m. meeting. You could have spotted a group of kids drinking them at soccer practice Or maybe you caught your own designated driver downing one while driving. Well, it may look like a beer or some crazy energy drink, but it's not. Liquid Death is actually a healthy beverage brand that makes mountain spring water, low sugar sodas, and low sugar iced teas too. Why is it called Liquid Death? Because Liquid Death will brutally murder your thirst. And their infinitely recyclable cans are helping to bring death to single-use plastic bottles. Liquid Death also donates a portion of profits from every can sold to help kill plastic pollution. We literally have them around all damn day and they are delicious. I have, I, I drink this, I drink the sparkling water, I drink the flavored waters. It is my hands-down favorite water on the planet. You can get free shipping of Liquid Dust Mountain Water flavored sparkling and iced tea eight packs with Amazon Prime or grab a can or a case at your local 7-Eleven, Target, Walmart, Whole Foods, or Instacart. Go to liquiddeath.com slash bears to check out all their healthy, infinitely recyclable beverages and find your closest retailer. That's liquiddeath.com slash bears, liquiddeath.com slash bears. And like, it's a, he's not a big guy. But his hands like a baseball mitt. You mean it's, Baker Mayfield? No, Johnny Menzel. Wait, when did we see Johnny? <laughs> God. <laughs> uh, we met him at the slap fight. Oh fuck yeah! Yeah. Oh yeah. shit yeah! I totally forgot that. You and we sat were, down we were and Cowboy talked. Cerrone. Yeah. See, yeah. Cowboy Cerrone is someone I'd fuck around with. Sure. Well, he's very funny. He yeah. He's he like it. I would I would make jokes like going like because I think he knows 
it's meant as a joke. Yeah, he definitely does. He has a good sense of humor. He's, but he's also a fucking man. Yeah, no, I wouldn't fuck with him. I'm saying wonder. he's funny. He's he he gets jokes. Yeah, he was funny that night. He was hilarious he was, at that. He was talking shit. He was talking shit too. Like it was dead silent, and then there he was like, "He ain't shit." And, <laughs> and I kept going, "He said that." He yeah, said yeah, that. yeah. No, he was a lot of fun. God damn. Yeah, those guys are fucking. He was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, but Manzel, uh, you clearly don't remember. I but, do. I do now. But that that's a fucking bear's paw on him. And then you're like, oh, that's. That's definitely the. There's just different builds to these people. Man. He's doing really good. I, 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 I now that I remember running into him, he's he's doing good and he's playing great golf. I've been talking. I talk about him on stage. I know. And uh, Sean, you know Sean, who I work with. Yeah. Like I've been talking about him on stage for a few months, and the uh, the other day he goes, "Dude, Johnny Manziel's white." It's <laughs> like, yeah, he goes. You've been talking about him. I just didn't assume he wasn't because you said how good he was. <laughs> I was like, yeah, yeah there's a few. Johnny there's Manziel, a few outliers. Johnny Manziel's like Big J. Yeah. Like he likes he likes the fun of the 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 spontaneousness of the sport. Yeah. But like if you tell Big J like, hey, you're gonna have to write Here's a the, Conan set, he'd yeah. be like, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny Manziel's cool as fuck. Yeah. All, all I think all I think did you see Jason Kelsey's retirement speech? Yeah. Yeah, he's a, it, was a, it was an emotional. Some cool watching a man cry. Yeah, about what like something that's meant, meant a lot to him. Yeah, it's something he's been dedicated to for you know his entire adult life. Entire. He's thirty six, man. Like that means like he's been playing ball since he was a kid. So thirteen like, years in the NFL, the majority of his life has been this one you know profession. I love that. I always thought he was just the greatest, and to hear he was an underdog, yeah, was kind of fucking cool. Yeah. He's a big man too. In person, you go like, "Oh, okay," and then he's undersized. That's the crazy thing. When you meet him, you're like, "Whoa!" And then you realize for the NFL, he's an undersized lineman. Yeah, these dudes are fucking monsters. Ah, oh, fucking. He said that what's his name has a big dick. I don't know. Carson Wentz. Was it Carson Wentz? He said, "I posted it. I posted it in my stories. Look at my stories on Instagram." He goes. He he goes the big hail mary play they threw yeah and he goes uh, and the guy I'll say this with the biggest dick on our team yeah yeah Nick Foles Nick Foles yeah. has the big had the biggest dick on our team yeah. I love that he brought up his dick size well that became folk like a, a big folklore thing in Philadelphia oh really it was like Nick Foles dick yeah yeah big dick Nick is what they would would call him and I guess he's like very uh, uh, you know kept to himself like the total opposite personality that you imagine give me a big dick you no know, nah, you'd be insufferable dude but uh i don't know if i'd be me i don't know i don't think i would uh i don't think i i would be me i think i needed my dick to establish my personality i think we all do i was saying the other day i'm so glad i was fat because i don't think you really appreciate your health until it's, you've once been fat and out of shape and unhealthy and then you get healthy it's almost like being rich it, I, those kids that just have been rich their whole life, yeah, it's not doesn't mean anything to them. But if you've been poor, yeah, and then you make some money, that money is so much more fun for you because you remember what it's like being poor. Of course, I wonder if that's how people that go through plastic surgery are like. I used to be ugly as fuck. I remember the I, there's so there's always see people that like overdo it. But I, I remember just uh, I knew a couple girls who just had crazy terrible noses. Oh, whoa. And then they'd come back from summer break with their new nose and they were gorgeous. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit, this is what was, this is all you needed. Like if you go crazy, then it's, you look like a fucking goblin. But like, if you just like fix a bad nose. Yeah. Some can, of those noses, I kind of think a big nose is sexy. I do too. I'm talking about, these were like just not beautiful yeah, noses. With like a big. Big beaks. Big you know? beak. Yeah. I think it's, there was a chick that was. Like one of those. There was a chick that was fat as fuck. Yeah. Our freshman year. Just, I mean, a big a tub of shit. Yeah. And then she went, like, and I was. Happy Women's Month. Ha Happy <laughs> National Women's Month. And, yeah. and, uh, and everyone, everyone wrote her off. And I, I didn't write her off, but I definitely wasn't like mean to her, but I was just friend. I, I wasn't like, I wasn't like you didn't beat her up. No, I didn't. I just was like kind of nice to her. Yeah, like just a regular person. Sure. And then she came back 
a fucking dime sophomore year. Yeah. And she goes to all all girls Catholic high school. I went to an all boys Catholic high school. Yeah. So the word got out. Has anyone seen this person? Yeah, yeah. I don't want to say her name. Edit it out. <gasps> okay. <laughs> okay. And they were like, "Has anyone seen her?" She came back. I guess her parents sent her to a fat camp, and she came back the hottest girl, yeah. and she was the coolest. Right, because she had a, she had fat girl personality, she had fat girl energy. Yeah, and so she came back with fat girl energy with hot chick body. Yeah, and she was like, "What's up, Bert?" And I was like, "Ah, uh, <laughs> remember I wasn't mean to you." <laughs> <laughs> I never hooked up with her. Yeah, I remember she she went for the guy that was a dick to her too. Of course, of course. So fucking, she could have. <sighs> it's a life lesson. She learned. She learned. She National learned. Women's Month. National. Wait, let's Day. talk about my blood work real quick. Okay. Perfect blood work. Per can I get? Can I get a bone broth? This is my new health system. Fasting. I am not a doctor. I am not a doctor. I'm. Thank you, brother. This is. I am not a doctor. Listen to me right now. But I will tell you, I have been doing. Who get kettle and fire? Kettle and fire. Kettle and fire does this bone broth, and I do bone broth every day. I fast, and for I try to do sixteen hour fast, and I've been keto if not carnivore, I mean, swear to God, but this bone broth, I swear to God, one cup and I feel like I'm done eating for, I, it, it, it staves off my hunger. I'm just gonna murder this real quick, hold on. Here, take it away, it's done, I'm done. I don't even need any more, that's it, thank you. Yes, perfect blood work. Clean bill? Top to bottom. Across Top the board? To bottom. Uh, I want to say this. I'm not a doctor. I'm just giving you my stats. Mm -hmm. uh, carnivore for roughly seven months. Carnivore. Keto, 100%. I would say 85% carnivore, meaning ribeye steaks every night. Eddie V's, anytime I'm in Austin, both nights I went to Eddie V's. I got their carpaccio, their, um, their uh, yellowtail sashimi. I got cream spinach and I got their fucking ribeye steaks every okay. fucking night in Austin. Okay. Cholesterol's better than it's ever been Jesus in my Christ. entire life. It sounds like a calorically dense meal. Perfect uh, blood work for my liver enzymes. Perfect. Really? Perfect. Perfect. And I went, I, I, I got, I got, I did the blood work Friday at like one thirty, and I was like, I won't get it till Monday unless it's bad. They call you immediately. And Saturday, Friday night, we went out, got fucking wasted. Yeah. Don't forget, let me forget to tell you about the code word. The code word? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, get home, get up at like four in the morning, and my blood work showed up in the middle of the night. Don't have my glasses on. I'm in a panic because uh, I've gotten bad, bad blood work. And you're my fucked last, up at this point? I'm hungover. Yeah. Look at it. Everything's in the green. Everything's perfect right down the center. And I went. Shut the fuck up. Eight in the morning, my doctor texts me, did you see your fucking blood work? He's like, this is fucking amazing. Whatever you're doing, stay on it. Dude, carnivore 100%. I drank 57 times in the last 210 days. I've, I've counted them. 57 times? 57 times. Okay. Well, it's more now. It's probably like fucking 65 okay. since I got my blood work. But uh, 57 times in the last 210 days, and I, I'm staying on it. I'm staying on it. I feel like health is, is one of those things just like... I had to be as fat as I fucking was mm -hmm. to understand how good it feels to simply tie your shoe, to simply be able to do, to get on a treadmill and jog without pain, to feel good, to get up and look in a mirror and not hate mirrors. Imagine how <gasps> felt when she came back. God. Sophomore year. She was so fucking pretty. Yeah. She yeah. And I know that all the other girls were like, fuck. And they were always cool to her because she was like the fat chick yeah they were always cool to her but then when she started out shining them yeah you could see the bitterness of course and she never really made it into that center click she was always an outsider yeah it's interesting anyway perfect blood work code word here we go okay so code word leanne's been getting drunk lately she's gonna be fucking livid when i tell this story okay she is in the lobby listening. she's drinking with you lately or on her own lately when leanne drinks mm -hmm. she gets ornery okay it's like a bull you can see the the smoke come out of her nose just <laughs> yeah and so one night <laughs> we get into a fight. Leanne's a little drunk. I don't, I don't think I was drinking. And I, the next morning I said, hey, you know, I was on your side last night. Like we were on the same side. She goes, I, I, I know, but what, like, what was it? And I said, well, I think when you drink, sometimes you get ornery and I notice it. I, I can pick it up. Yeah. I, I, and 
even the girls can pick it up because like it, it doesn't it's just it's like a weird ornery like like let's just have a drink and then go and that's why all that laundry is on the stairs ain't no one taking it upstairs but me i and like it just starts coming out so i said there should be a code word she's gonna walk in this room and make me stop talking okay there should be a code word that we use okay <laughs> when we notice the other person's drunk okay and then when we go hey everyone because for me you know mine i get sensitive yeah and i think everyone's teaming up on me okay she goes okay so the code word will be for you if i notice that you're getting in your feelings because you've had alcohol mm -hmm. i'm gonna say hey blue eyes yeah and then you'll know <laughs> it'll pull me out and i go okay. and if i you notice it for me uh -huh. you say hey brown eyes <laughs> okay and then all you know is you hear that and you go i'm centered the person i'm with loves me we're a team nothing bad can happen so we go to dinner with whitney cummings and her boyfriend mm -hmm. i won't say her boyfriend's name because i don't know if they're out in public or okay and so leanne has a martini <laughs> then another martini <laughs> and whitney asks an inside baseball question about like business stuff mm -hmm. and leanne is kind of talking shit and leanne just goes let me fucking tell you about that bitch and i go hey brown eyes and then it's supposed to work where she goes you're right she goes i'm getting code worded already <laughs> he pulled the code word out i'm getting code worded can you believe that and i go hey that's not how code words work and she, <laughs> she's like no this motherfucker we have a code word if someone's drunk and they're talking shit we get a code word and he's already code worded me i only had one drink oh our code word now everyone knows our fucking code word <laughs> i'm like i was like this is not how it's supposed to work <laughs> I could not stop fucking laughing. I go, Whitney goes, what is she saying? I go, I just finished your statement on their brown eyes. So I can fucking wrap it up. This so, is two martinis in? Two martinis in. We haven't even gotten our appetizers yet. <laughs> and, and so, so, so we had to change our code word. But apparently a lot of people have code words that they, a lot of couples have code words for that kind of thing. For like, like if you're, if, if you're saying something you're not supposed to say, like yeah. do you and Christina have a code word? Cause she likes to tie one on. Yeah. She'll, she'll, uh, she'll get a little loose, but no, I, I don't think I have a code word. No, it's usually like a look or a look. It's a look or an under the table squeeze. That's usually the, the, the code word. The code word really? is like, yeah, just like a, a little leg. Or a hand squeeze, like, hey, Jesus, <laughs> what are you doing? It's one of those. But I don't have a code. But code word's a good idea. Yeah, we have a new code also, word. Also, no, I don't think it would work, though. I think I would say, hey, brown eyes, and she'd be like, what about him? And I'd be like, that's not how the guest goes. <laughs> <laughs> I was code word her last night at dinner. Yeah. Because yeah. I love when she drinks, because uh -huh. it is the chick that I, it is the chick that I never got to date. It's the fucking redneck who doesn't mind pushing someone into their, tr like, yeah. it's, it's, I love that energy. And man, she, she got, Leanne got lit last night. We all went out to Betty V's and she called our daughters and was talking shit. I loved it. I was laughing so hard. George is like, mom. And she's like, ah, fuck them. And just, oh, I love that energy. Wow. Yeah. She, she's been getting, she's been getting loose. And sounds you know, like it. You we, sounds like you have multiple stories. <laughs> dude, I have so many good Leanne stories right now. We went to, we went to uh, Philip Lee's uh, uh, Sushi by Scratch. It's great. It's great. And it, we had so much fun. And there were two girls that were getting hammered down at the end of the bar. And they were just like, they were, they got drunk quick. And Leanne was just, Leanne's eavesdropping on every, it was, we had such a fucking good, good eavesdrops are yeah. the fucking it's best. Good time, yeah. The fucking best. Yeah. I almost think they should make a, a thing on your phone where you can eavesdrop better on somebody. You know, like those things they have on the sidelines? Like spyware. around it? Yeah, like yeah. spyware. Yeah. I could. I'm fuck. sure that's available. I don't think they're going to, I think you have to seek it out. The thrill and excitement of March Mania is here, and DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps, is giving new customers a shot to turn 5 bucks into $150 instantly in bonus bets with any college basketball bet. Dude, when I was in college, all I did was bet on basketball. College basketball, in my 
opinion is so much easier to navigate than pro basketball. And it's the funnest way to spend a Saturday afternoon or like a lazy Thursday night. North Carolina listeners, don't forget, DraftKings Sportsbook is now live in your state. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use code BEARS. New customers can bet 5 bucks to get $150 instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code BEARS. The crown is yours. This episode of Two Bears, One Cave is brought to you by Sattva. I want you to go to Sattva, S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash the shit for $200 off any mattress of your choice. I have heard from so many of you because I have been an authentic and genuine user of Sattva products for over a decade. I love them. It's all we have. I have it in my room. I have it in the kids' room. I have it in the guest room. I've tried them all, and I can't say anything, but you're going to sleep better and be thankful. You're going to send me the message, thank you for helping me sleep on something amazing instead of this ridiculous dog bed that I've been sleeping on. Go to Sattva, S-A-A-T-V-A dot com slash the shit and get $200 off any mattress of your choice, a traditional mattress, a memory foam mattress, a mattress that vibrates and moves up and down. These things are almost talking to you, and I'm sure that's next in the lineup for them. Go to Safa.com slash the shit and get that $200 off. I love, I love other people's conversations more it's than fun. mine. Yeah, it's fun. It's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. We play games like when we're at, um, where, where you guess people's lives. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you start putting, you start assuming like oh that guy he's a fucking he's a you know he owns a, a shipping company that lady she's probably like a pilates instructor you start building their life and then you ask them and you see if whether you guessed well oh hold on yeah. can i tell you my two favorite eavesdrops i've ever had sure the girls and i took a cruise from um california to fucking puerto vallarta or whatever you wherever you take that cruise from yeah and we are sitting having dinner and there is a table of eight black women. Mm. And they are fucking shitting on one of their girlfriend's boyfriends. One of their friend's sister. I think it's they're all related. So it's family. Why would you have to bring him? She goes, he's cool. And I'm, I'm not doing the accent well. And they're like, he's annoying. He's And they're lighting this guy up. And w there's one seat available. And we're the girls and I are just, no one's talking at our table. We're just eavesdropping. Yeah. And we're like, and they're like, he's disgusting he smells there he he gets drunk he talks shit he's we did not want him coming and you brought him and she's like i love him and they're like he's not right for you and we're just waiting and waiting and waiting all of a sudden isla starts kicking the table and she goes oh he's coming and it's better than i thought it's a skinny white dude with like a chin strap beard and he's like yo yo what up <laughs> Reveal. Yeah. Second best eavesdrop. Leanne and I are at the beach. This guy's going to hear this. He's going to know I'm talking about him. He is? He has to. I I introduced myself to him. He was that interesting. He, we're sitting in fucking in, uh, I might have even told you this. We were sitting in the Cayman Islands mm -hmm. and we're in our cabana and the cabana next door is a bunch of Canadians and I hear the words and that's how my first wife almost died. And I'm like, huh? And they go, and then everyone goes, on your honeymoon? And he goes, who knows you could get frostbite and, Bram and Banff in the winter. I took her horseback riding for our honeymoon. We, we She almost died. My second wife, now she died. And I'm like, oh. I, I'm like, Leanne, stop talking. I'm listening to this guy. He was so interesting. I went over and introduced myself to him. I was like, I need to know more about your life. And he was like, I'm a lawyer from Ottawa. Huh. Huh. How many wives have you had? I was like, he's like, I'm on my fourth. And she was like, I'm not dying. He kills them all. And I'm like. <laughs> I know somebody who's had three uh, uh, spouses die. Yeah, and then, I know. And then I found out that four girls that I have at least dated for a few weeks are dead. Isn't that crazy? Four? For real? Yeah. Like either someone, uh, one of them I dated for like a month. One of them I dated for a summer. One of them I dated for a year and the other one was more like a, you know, fling. Yeah. All four are dead. How'd they die? One of them died in a car accident. One of them uh, was a, a fall. That's Xanax. Yeah. Uh, one of them 
was an illness. One of them's missing. So I guess we just assume she's dead. You sound like the guy from that Netflix documentary. Yeah. Have you seen that Netflix documentary? Which one? The one where they go, so they showed up in scuba suits. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. American Nightmare. American yeah, Nightmare. Yeah. That is the best fucking well, guy. Also, the guy, though, when he's telling the story, the, the, he's like, and she's gone. And you're like, that's your <laughs> that's your sad face? He's like, I just wanted to help her, you know? Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, this is not, you're not really emoting well. What time did you wake up? And he's like, you're like 11? Yeah. And you waited till 1.30 to call us? Well, they were watching me. They were watching me with the camera up there. And they got and the detectives are like, okay, so <laughs> how, we, about, uh, how about he goes? The, the one detective's like, buddy, what I do is I I tell who's talking shit and you're talking shit. Like yeah, this yeah. is a lie, yeah. And I know you're lying. And then the, the one the one guy that did the fucking polygraph. By the way, if you haven't seen this doc, it's so fucking American good. Night, It's so well done. I I still think though. Okay, don't tell, even spoil alert. No, it. let's spoil. Yeah, we just spoil it now. Let's just ruin it. Let's ruin it. Yeah, let's yeah. ruin it. If but, you haven't seen this, and by the way, we're gonna talk about Spaceman next. But when you watched it, okay, episode one yes. focuses on the guy, the male yes. uh, victim, yes. suspect. When you're watching episode one, aren't you like, hey, man, something's up with you? He killed her. Yeah, because- Your sheets aren't on your bed anymore. But also- You waited till everything, there were three guys in scuba outfits. But don't you feel like the way that his emotions read, you're like, these don't feel yeah. like- And then the thing is, he's present day, like for the documentary- but then they show you the interrogation room and it's exactly the same. He's like, yeah. And then they came in and like, oh God, I just want, I want her, I want her back. I want her back. And then they're like, okay. And yeah. you, so you watch that whole thing and you're like, this guy is definitely full of shit. Yeah. And then the second episode starts with the girl and she's like, yeah, they took me. And she has the same level of emotion where you're like, this does it. I don't, you don't believe her. Yeah. Until the end of episode two, you don't That's believe when you her. Start to when go, she like, goes, when okay. she see her walking into her parents' house casually on her cell phone, yeah. like you're like in her nursing outfit. I think it looked like, yeah, and you're she, like, this is fucking horseshit. And then to learn in episode three is when you go, wait, wait, they're telling the truth. The only thing crazier than the two of them is the guy who kidnapped her. Who's like, first of all, she's not lying. I did kidnap yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you better not <laughs> accuse her of lying again. Yeah, you better yeah. not. Or I'll start kidnapping your kids. Yeah, he's fucking. And he's giving advice. He's like, first of all, you have terrible locks. You need an alarm system. Get you a bigger get a dog. dog. You get a dog. Like, it's the most banana story. I, him breaking into people's house about people and then stopping and going, yeah, you're right. I fucked up. That's the wildest thing in the world. Yeah. He broke into that lady's house. Yeah. And then and then was like, and then no one believed any of the fucking women. Yeah. No one believed. Now that we're celebrating National Women's Month. Yes. We should just step up and say all those people that work at fucking Vallejo police display. That was horrible. They should be fucking fired. And the they, FBI guy was fucking his ex-wife. He had such a conflict of interest. Like he should have recused himself from the case. And then when he gets the lead. Like the groundbreaking lead, he's like, yeah, we'll look into it. She's like, aren't you like flipping out right now that I gave you this? And he's like, I don't know. We need maybe. to do a test. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's get some sodas and talk this through first. Yeah, it's very, it's very bizarre. The only thing that that like kind of goes over most people's mind though is that when you're watching the detectives and and how shitty they handle themselves, you have to remind yourself that you actually felt that way about this guy too when you start, oh, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, I never thought. I, yeah, so, so like when you're watching him, you're like, this fucking guy's full of shit. And then you're watching the detectives and they're like, yeah, you're fucking full of shit. <laughs> yeah. So you actually are aligned with the detective and you don't realize it. Oh yeah, I never realized that. Cause I, because I at a certain point have the foresight to know. Exactly. Oh, that they, she really did get abducted. Yeah. They've caught the guy. But they just went so, they leaned so hard into their full of shit that they blast them on the news. The yeah. chief of police is like, burn that bitch. It's fucking. And then <laughs> they question him in the depth. And he's like, I don't remember saying that. <laughs> you want to burn that bitch? Uh, it doesn't sound like my vocabulary. Who? Let's go through history to celebrate women, National Women's Yes. Life. And we may be the wrong podcast to do this. Maybe. And also to the women that I've known that are dead. They were great. Let's take a moment of silence to okay. all the women you dated that are no longer with us. All mine are still here. Okay. But I don't have a big list. Neither do I. That's why it's kind of sad. I wonder if they're all here. There's one I can't find. Yeah. 
Um, nice girls. The uh, who? Let's let's celebrate women for a second. Okay. Let's start. Let's start with the top five bad bitches in the world. Meaning. In history, in history, we're talking JFK status, Martin Luther King status, like but women, but women, okay. Uh, like I mean, so they're not there; they're below. Obviously, they're well, yeah, they're women, yeah, they're women. So, and this is going to be tough because there's some bad motherfucking women, and and when you think about the, if you're talking history, not the current ones, we're not doing Kamala Harris, right? We're talking <laughs> ones that had to do. She's yeah. not, she doesn't make the fucking list. No. No, not even remotely. Nothing. I mean, I would even say. So we, we, we start. We start. Amelia Earhart. No. Why? Can't do lesbians. Why are we taking them? Because because they, they have weren't. male traits. We got it. No. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they were so focused on <laughs> pussy. They were like, that's what I want to do. But she's amazing. Okay. She did crash. That's a good point. Yeah. It's like. No one talks about the people that didn't get to Everest. <laughs> yeah. Like he was one of the best climbers. Boy, where's he doing now? Well, he's up there still. He's still there. Yeah. Like everyone's like, I mean, yeah, she had some good runs. I mean, there's better pilots than her. There are. There are better pilots than her. There's one, the first female to fly. Uh, there's think about the tits it had to take back then to fucking solo fly across. Dude, bitches did it before her. Who? It was a chick Googler. First female to fly. She set the record flying from England to Australia. Really? Yeah. And she did it way before Amelia Earhart. Amy Johnson. She flew solo from England to Australia in 1930. Well, then she's on the list. No, she's not. She died too, I think. Flying? Yeah. You can't see if Amy Johnson died. You can't listen. Well, she's definitely dead. It's from the fucking (laughs) early, early 1900s. At 37, 37 she yeah, definitely died a, in a plane crash. That's a plane. Is, is it, it ran out of fuel. That's not her fault. Uh, Really? Well, it's okay. just like a woman not to fill it up before you leave. Yeah, that's And then true. go, hold on. And they go, hold on. We still got 23 more miles. I go, yeah, but we're getting on. on the interstate. The incident was initially claimed on poor weather, but it was later claimed the plane was downed by friendly fire. Shot down is definitely not. Yeah, but it's, we can't really be sure about that. Really? Yeah. And I, I think I, I will right. stand as the foremost uh, knowledgeable person about Amy Johnson. And <laughs> and so, and listen, by the way, I doubt we're going to get any blowback from her. No, so, we're not. She looks beautiful in that picture. Yeah. First of all, uh, can't, it's got, you got, look, okay. If So you got to take, I, I, these are the rules for the baddest bitches in the world. Okay. What's the rule? And I, I hate that I'm saying this, but. I'm going to say, and for, this is our game, so we can do whatever we want. They have to be straight. Jesus. Okay. Well, no, because then here's the deal. Back in the in the Industrial Revolution, they only hired women and children because they were subservient. And right. so they could tell them to do whatever the fuck they said they can do. Okay. So now we're, what we're looking for is bad bitches like who, who push back against society. Still dated men, so still liked men, yeah. right? And, and, but pushed against societal norms. So, like, when you look at someone like Margaret Thatcher, Mm -hmm. the Iron Lady, Mm -hmm. she was a bad bitch. She was the first one. She was a groundbreaking woman. Like, Rosa Parks, bad bitch. Rosa Parks, no one's got what Rosa Parks had. That's a very, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Amy Johnson, Amelia Earhart, dime a dozen. Rosa Parks, not. Rosa Parks did something none of us would have the balls to even stand up adjacent to her. So like that's what I'm saying when I say bad bitch like okay. like really bad motherfucker. Okay, so Harriet Tubman. She's on the list. Uh, fuck yes. F- and by the way, I I don't want to start with two women of color because I feel like I'm I've already blown off. Yeah, it's right? also it's like how many how many are we gonna have? I don't. I so I mean there will there's a fucking bunch. I'm okay. I, t- I pull Maya Angelou off the list. She's I was she was on my list originally. I pulled her off. I saw okay. an interview of her on Sally Jesse Raphael that just turned me off. Oh, really? <laughs> what did she say that upset you? It's just the way she talked to someone. It was like a Bill Cosby thing. Oh, like kind of lecturing them? Yeah. It's yeah. like, uh, you need to be relatable. Okay. All right. So Gloria Stefan. Do you say Gloria Steinem? Stefan. Gloria Stefan. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll listen. All right. I mean, like Cuban had to, you know, deal with the, 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 it's a male-dominated business. Boom. 
became a huge, huge pop star. Huge. Okay, huge. Gloria Stefan, bigger. Okay, okay. I like where we're going. So now, now we're gonna we're gonna straight, like, straight, which straight. is part yeah. of your <laughs> fuck yeah, it's part <laughs> of my credentials. Yeah. Um, because we can do a lesbian list. We can do a lesbian list. Okay, it's a different list. Billy, Billy Jean King, fucking yeah, right. Okay. But okay. it's a different. She played a different thing than the than like the straight ladies. Yeah, gotcha. Uh, so. Okay, so if we're going to do Gloria Stefan, so then let's name the people in her field that she's better than. Is she better than Madonna? I mean, if you're you're looking at it now, right? Because like there's yeah. a time when it was a I think more of a now I I think it's without question. Without Gloria. question because Madonna's a white chick, Gloria Stefan, person of color, had to rise above but more. Also, Madonna's fucking Don't do now. Madonna Madonna now. Don't it's do crazy. Madonna now. Well, Madonna in her heyday was the biggest thing in the world. In the biggest thing in the world, but but I I would say and also definitely here's the thing though definitely sexually fluid. So maybe doesn't that like not she's out. cut? Yeah, she definitely she's ate out. a lot of box. She's definitely she did. <laughs> Gloria Stefan sure. did not eat box. No, I think Gloria Stefan is in that list. And in a bus accident, broke her back, came back, still had a fucking thriving career. Incredible, great businesswoman too. I think I will say this: had Selena lived longer. It would be a run. She would give. You think so? Selena was a bad motherfucker. Okay. Selena, Selena. I I just saw the one movie on her, <laughs> but Selena was pretty fucking dope. Okay. Okay. Gloria Stefan, Rosa Parks, Harriet Tubman. So I say, I say we do this. I say we gotta. We can only do. Uh, I think we gotta pick Rosa Parks or Harriet Tubman. I mean, Harriet had a fucking harder <laughs> time for sure. Yeah. 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 She definitely did. <laughs> Yeah, she definitely did. She definitely did. God, I have like a thing for Rosa Parks. Well, look, we can't let your your sexual feelings influence the list. I think it has to be a um... no. It's not sexual. I just, I just, there's. I got obsessed with Rosa Parks for okay. a period of time. Yeah, yeah. I got really obsessed. You know, she was like the fifth person to sit down on the bus and not take, not move. I I, I learned that in later years that she wasn't the first one. She wasn't just... the first one. It was just that it had the biggest impact. Yeah, it had the biggest impact because of who she was, church going lady. Like the one one chick had got, I think, was pregnant at like fifteen, and they're like, "No, we can't let that one be the fucking face because it's gonna." And so they they overlooked a couple. Did you know that Marie Antoinette did not say "Let them eat cake"? No, she never said it. Well, then what? What's the? It's just a, one of those things. It's like everyone thinking her? Sinbad was in a movie about genies. So it's just never happened. Does everybody think that? Yeah. Type in Sinbad Genie movie. Sinbad Genie movie. Non-existent film Shazam has been allegedly to start in by Sinbad as a genie. Everyone just remembers remembers it as their collective unconscious. Type in Marie Antoinette, let them eat cake. Okay. Marie Antoinette, by the way, little insight on her. Is the most famous quote attributed to Marie Antoinette, the Queen of France during the French Revolution. As the story goes, it was the Queen's response upon being told that her starving peasant subjects had no bread. But she never really said it. Or at least that's what a podcast I listened to. Oh, okay. Uh, But did she ever actually utter those words? Probably not. Qu'il mangeant de les brioches. Doesn't exactly translate to let them eat cake. It translates to as well as let them eat brioche. Of course, since brioche is a rich bread made with eggs and butter, almost as luxurious as cake, it doesn't really change the point of the story. More important though, there's absolutely no historical evidence that Marie Antoinette ever said the let them eat brioche or anything like it. So where did the quote come from and how did it become associated with Marie Antoinette? Um... As it happens, folklore scholars have found similar tales in other parts of the world, although the details differ from one version to another. In a tale collected in 16th century Germany, for instance, a noble woman wonders why the hungry poor, poor don't simply eat a sweet bread, a uh, kosem. Essentially, stories of rulers or aristocrats oblivious to their privileges are popular and widespread legends. Um, okay. What's more amazing about this is an ad for your tour was at the bottom of the page. Yeah, it was. That's fucking bizarre. That is crazy. That's fucking bizarre. That's weird. Yeah. It's like getting a pop up ad for dick enlargement pills when you have a small dick and yeah. you're like, how do hey, you know? How is this? Um, Marie Antoinette, Prussian, right? She gets given to King Louis at like 14. He's like 15. Jesus. And they take her to the Prussian border. You know what they do to her? They mm. strip her nude at 14 
and they go, she's yours. Take all her clothes off her. Send her over. It was like the custom back then. They then dress her and they're like, you're ours. These are our clothes. I'm going to dress like a Prussian. We're going to fucking Paris, baby. Yeah. Okay. Queen Elizabeth. I'm putting Queen Elizabeth on this list. Why? I love her. Really? I love Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth does not want to be queen. Yeah. Her fucking coward uncle denounces the throne for some fucking high society slut. Yeah. <laughs> the, by the way, bring up Truman Capote. The, have you seen this Truman Cody Swans thing? I'm Swans? all over the fucking map. Yeah, you really are. It's these fucking, I switched over to Lucy's. Lucy's are the shit. And they have these little breakers, I and know. I love breaking them. It's I like know. Someone's Let me get one. Boom. The, um, hold on, stop with Truman Capote. Queen Elizabeth does not want to be queen. Her dad dies, no male heir. She has to be queen. She didn't want to even fucking do it. And she was queen. She let her husband go around and fuck island hopping. Tight. He, dude. Yeah. How crazy would that guy? That guy like lives on a fucking bachelor party on a boat yeah. for like five years just going island to island. And he's like, if they get pregnant, we kill them. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. It's Pretty cool. I put Queen Elizabeth on the list. Okay. Out of all the queens, so you got to put a queen on there. You just put a queen... So we got Harriet Tubman, Queen Elizabeth, Gloria Stefan. <laughs> yeah. And you wanted Margaret Thatcher on there. No. Nope. two Brits. Nope, 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 nope. Queen Elizabeth over oh, Margaret Thatcher. Really? Margaret Thatcher was kind of a cunt. She, she, I mean, from my understanding. Okay. Like the Falkland Wars was all her. The fucking, the big uh, coal mining, iron ore thing. Mm -hmm. She kind of fucked those guys. Okay. She fucked everyone. Okay. I, I mean, I know I'm going to get pushed back, but I, Margaret Thatcher wasn't like the hero. She, pretty cool what she did. Yeah, yeah. But I'd, I'd take Condoleezza Rice over Margaret Thatcher. All right. So we have... Uh, <laughs> do we do athlete? Queen, uh, we should do athlete for sure. Now, that's tough because so many great ones are gay and you do not allow them in this list. So who can we allow in to the great athlete debate? It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer? Yeah. Venus Williams. Oh. Straight. Venus, not Serena? Which one? Serena Williams. Okay. I take Serena over Venus. Venus. Cena. You know what I mean. Yeah. I take v v I take Serena, Serena. Serena's unbelievable. Best female athlete ever? You absolutely have that uh ammo for that argument. Yeah. Uh let's 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 put her in the let's let's quantify her in the bad bitch list. Ready? Yeah. Uh woman of color. At a young age, playing in public courts on Compton with her dad as her coach, right? Yeah. Not set up to succeed. Her sister, arguably, is better than her. At that age, At yes. that age, 100%. Still goes on to, and then push back from society. That's the other thing we need is a push back from society yeah. when they're telling her what to wear on the court. And she goes, no, fuck you. Yeah. I'm wearing this. Yeah. And she just dominated the sport. She Completely. dominated the sport. And she dominated that sport more than any woman has ever dominated any sport ever and ever, ever, ever. Yes, she was super dominant. Okay. So now you got Venus. Venus. Sorry. We Gloria Stefan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Harriet Tubman. Harriet Tubman. Okay. Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is a weird orgy. One, two, three, four. So we need one more. We need one more. <sighs> okay. So wait, what's the world we're going to pick from? Because we have an athlete. Yes. We have a musician. We have a humanitarian. A humanitarian. And we have a princess. So a politician. Okay. Queen. So we didn't take Explorer because they they never really panned out. They die. We doing didn't their take. Thing. Do we do? Do we do actress? Mm. Who would who would get? Like Catherine Hepburn would be a fucking. Yeah, I mean, does she push back against? Oh yeah. What all the? I'd have been gay though. Oh, I think she was gay. Um, because they can't just be great; they have to be straight, <laughs> and they have to. Oprah. No, get out of here. You know, do you see what she did with the Ozempic? No. Allegedly, I don't even know. I I just heard overheard this. She is like the head of Weight Watchers. Mm -hmm. And she's been on Ozempic for like two years. Really? And everyone's like, you look great. She's like, Weight Watchers. And then oh. finally she was like, okay, I'm on Ozempic. 
Oh, really? Yeah. What does so, she look like right now? What does Oprah look like in 2024? Let's see. Ooh. Images. Oh, yeah. She okay. still looks good. I would, I would have sex with Oprah just to lay in Jesus. bed with her and hear her talk in the morning. Really? Yeah. Is she still with that guy? That guy? Stedman? Yeah. I, probably. I don't think a guy like that goes anywhere. <laughs> I don't think Stedman's got options. He's got options. Whoa, that's what Stedman looks like. Fucking Al Sharpton. Go to that picture on the left. Get... Is that Stedman now? Yeah. No, it's back in the day. Oh. It's 30 years old, man. Oh, St he, Stedman's a good looking man. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Stedman's a good looking man and he's a great side piece. Jesus. That guy fucking is a ride or die for his chick. Yeah. He, I think he should get a vote. I think we should take Stedman over Oprah no, for National women. Women's Month. This is women. Yeah, but he does kind of play the part a little bit. <sighs> yeah, that's So true. we have Gloria Stefan, Stedman. <laughs> Venus, Harriet, Venus. and the Queen. Yeah, we have a lot of people of color on this list. What about we like just a, got the queen. She didn't even do anything. She just got born into it. Yeah, that I don't. I want to remove the queen, but top put in. Let's just see how our list compares to the internet. Top ten greatest women ever. Let's we'll see, like what a, what a list says. We should have put Jenna Jameson on our list. I was gonna say somebody we should have like, had a porn star. Millie Kelly. Oh Molly yeah, Kelly. That who was the first one. chick you jerked off to, like in porn? Marie Curie. Marie Curie. Yeah, it was like boom, pasteurization. Who was your first porn uh, star? It wasn't a porn star. It was uh, a chick in Vogue magazine. Oh, yeah. No, I, I jerked off to the Sports Illustrated issue for sure. But I'm saying when you saw porn, who was the first porn? I wouldn't even be able to tell you. Seriously? It was a chick that put a, her foot in another girl's pussy. <laughs> that was your it first one? off guard. Yeah, yeah. I'd never seen anything like that. And I was like, no, cool. God, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna know where this is on that day. And you didn't make note of who that was. I don't even know who she was. That's a good move. Yeah. Whole foot going? It, it, it just toes, but it was okay. so fucking hot. Yeah. I didn't I didn't expect it. That's what caught me off guard. Yeah. And that's what I like in, in porn is like when you go, Whoa, what's that? Yeah, like, yeah. I love that. There's so like now there's no new moves left. There's nothing. Yeah. So it's hard to surprise me. Rosa Parks is on there. Number two. Wow. We should have fucking kept her. Where's Harriet Tubman? Wait, hold on. Who's this bitch? Emmeline Prankhurst? A leader of the British uh, Oh suffrage. suffrage. Yeah. Uh, get no, out of here. Pass. Pass. Ada Lovelace sounds Ooh, like a porn star. Keep sure going. Does. Was the first person on the record to acknowledge the capability of what computers could do and worked with Charles Babbage, the father of computers, to translate an article which is considered to be the first instance of computer programming. That's do you know what impressive. that means? Do you know what it means? She not. basically did all the work and that guy took all the fucking credit. Yeah, yeah, which is actually the fucking move. <laughs> so, Rosalind Franklin. <laughs> is that what you do on your mom's house? <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Rosalind Franklin, she was into. Okay, keep going. We oh, don't there's care. Margaret. Margaret Thatcher. She, God damn it. We cut Art. her off our list, though. The Iron Lady was the first female prime minister and came to power in 1979, 61 years after women got the right to vote. Yeah. Oof. Angela Coots. Burdick. Coots. Not on our list. Sad. You look sad. Philanthropist. One of the wealthiest women in Britain. She uh -huh. co-founded whatever. Scroll. Mary Wollstonecraft. That's back in the day. A British writer, philosopher, and advocate for women's rights. Florence Nightingale. Oh, we didn't think about her. Fuck, I didn't think about Florence Nightingale. Florence Nightingale. Okay, scroll. We know what she did. Mary Stopes. Wait, what did she do? I don't know what she, she did. She was a nurse. Oh, really? Yeah, she was like a secular nurse. I thought she was a Days of Our Lives actress. Uh, Marie Stopes. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Yeah, you know she's British, right? Oh, hold on, hold on, hold yeah. on. Ready? Yeah. Don't even tell me what she did. Just judge by her face what she did. Fucking. By the way, we're I, we're taking this. It's National Women's Month. We should celebrate her. I know. Made tea. I don't know what she did. She doesn't. Okay, okay. This is before makeup, I guess. Yeah. Go, go down. Go down. Uh, she founded the first birth control clinic in North London. Okay. Great. She was yeah. an abortion doctor. That's cool. Eleanor. Of Aquitaine. Ooh, that's back in the Dizzy. Middle Ages. The Virgin Mary? Oh, Motherfucker. We could have had her on the list. We could have had her. Jane Austen? Jane Austen? Shit. I was thinking of a different Jane All right, Austen. all right. Let's pivot. You ready? Yeah. Let's do now top five most evil women in history. Okay. 
Like we're looking for Hitler's equivalent. All right, Amber Heard. Ooh. Oh, that's hold on. Right? Eve. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. She's not gonna make the list when you think about like Amelda Marcos. Like when you think of like the bad bitches. You think Amelda Melda Marcos was not nice? I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah, okay. I think so. Type in Amelda Marcos. I don't really know anything about her other than she had shoes. Lots of shoes. Lots um and lots so but no, but you got like Eileen Warner, Eileen the Warner's. serial killer. Who's the girl that Casey Anthony? Casey Anthony, yeah. Uh, Griselda Blanco? Yeah. There are some real bad bitches. Look at her. Ooh. Look at that expression on her face. <laughs> That's get the fuck out of my face. Uh I get this is what made me think about it. I was watching this thing on Vice about the Korean there's like five Korean families who own everything in Korea. Yeah. One of them owns the Korean Airlines. Or yeah, she owns the Korean Airlines, yeah. her family. And they're getting ready to take off. And the flight attendant brought her a bag of macadamia nuts and didn't put them on a plate. And she had them turn the plane around and fired that person and had them escorted off the plane. And then goes, now we can take off. Yes. This is the owner of Korean Airlines? Type in Korean macadamia nuts uh, airlines. I guarantee you it comes up. What? Nut, nut rage. rage incident. Okay. The nut rage incident. Colloquially referred to as Nutgate. <laughs> That's not the right name. Which is only 2014, occurred in uh, JFK to New York City onboard Korean flight where the Korean Air Vice President, Heather Cho, uh, dissatisfied with the way a flight attendant served nuts on the plane, ordered the aircraft to return to the gate before takeoff. Wow. All fat first class passengers, including Cho, were given nuts bagged in their original packaging in keeping with the airline's procedures. However, Cho had expected them to be served on a plate in first class. She questioned the cabin crew chief about the standard procedure of serving the nuts. After a heated confrontation, Cho assaulted him and ordered him off the plane, requiring a return to the gate, delaying the flight only about 20 minutes. Uh, when the incident became public, Cho and Korean Air were heavily criticized, and in the aftermath, Cho resigned from one of her several executive positions. She was subsequently found guilty in a South Korean court of obstructing aviation safety and given a 12-month prison sentence, wow. of which she served five months. The flight attendant and cabin crew chief had returned to their positions by April of 2016. That That's is... Bad bitch energy. All right. So I guess uh, Heather Cho. Is Heather on the Cho. List. I think we put her on the list. <laughs> of one of the most evil women in history. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any Korean dates coming up? Oh, Jesus Christ. So you got like, so you got like, there are a bunch of serial killer women that you don't know about. Yeah, there's a lot but, of them. And so, so I don't know if we go all serial killer. Yeah, because that, that would fill up a list real quick. Yeah. But like, I heard Winnie Mandela was pretty bad. Really? I heard Winnie Mandela. Winnie Mandela, by the way, came in late to the game. I got to tell you, just for the optics, I think I'd live her off the list. <laughs> I think I think you give Mandela's wife a pass. <laughs> I mean, might be on Bert's personal list, but maybe for the show. In. Winnie she, she, first of all, okay, I, maybe I should know, She did deal it. with some shit. I don't know if you no, know. No, no, no. She just, she married him when he was in prison. Okay. She married him in like 1997. Really? I think. Okay. Like she wasn't like his OG chick when he was doing all the civil rights stuff and then got put on that island. No. She wasn't that chick. M Winnie Mandela was like the new chick. Hmm. Is that right? Uh, Please say that's right. Well, here we go. Winnie Mandela. Uh, met oh, lawyer Nelson oh. in 1957 when he was still married okay. to Evelyn Mace. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, okay. okay. Home record. Mandela was arrested, jailed in 63, not at least the couple separated in 92, finalized their divorce in 96 uh, with an unspecified out of court settlement. Um, and then when asked uh, in 1994 about the possibility of reconciliation, I'm not fighting to be a country's first lady. This is what she's saying. Uh, okay. Go to controversy. There's got to be controversy in here. Because if I'm not mistaken, like he had to do a lot of cleaning up after he got out of jail because of her. Really? Uh, I I think I you. Okay, let's just leave her off. Okay, she endorsed the practice of necklacing. Okay, she's on the fucking list, Tommy. You know what necklacing is? When they put a tire around your neck and light you on fire. Oof. Okay. 
That's an execution. She method, endorsed yeah. the practice of. Okay, you're right. I should not say a fucking word about Winnie Mandela. She was a great person. Okay. Okay. Let's leave her off the list. Okay. Leave her off the list. Maybe even edit that out. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we definitely have Eileen Warnos, but that's just because she's going to represent all serial killers. Also, she's the worst. Or, or she's the most famous. Most famous. Yeah. You got Griselda Blanco. Uh, yeah. Did you, did you see that show? No, but I've seen it's, I've seen the so docs about weird. her. Yeah. You get. Uh, Who's like an evil, who's like an evil uh, woman American politician? Oh, that's, that's pretty subjective, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, you can probably make a oh, case that they all are. <laughs> They're all fucking <laughs> self-serving assholes. And this is all in celebration of National Women's Month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys, this is all about you. I'm sure there's a podcast with two women. No one's probably listening, but two women. Who are doing the same thing on National White Men's Awareness Month? Is there a National White Men's Awareness Month? Yeah, I don't know. There should be. We've done a lot. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. Nothing would work without us. Can we even air this episode? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so, Griselda Blanco, Eileen Warnos, Heather Cho. <laughs> Heather Cho, the Korean Air Executive. Um, who's like, who's like a mogul female? She's got oh, it's the Thanos girl. Oh, the, it's Thanos. It's Elizabeth. What's her name? Uh, Elizabeth Brooks. Holmes? No, Smith. No, Elizabeth. The turtleneck. I think it's Holmes. Huh? I think it's Holmes. Elizabeth Holmes. Holmes. Is it Holmes? Yeah. There you go. She's on the list. Yeah. Yeah. Evil. That's evil. It really is. That is. You know, it's yeah. it's evil how, and she's completely zero emotion about it. Like, just and then put nothing in, now, behind there. This will be a good one. Put in evil female dictator. Yeah. Okay. What's the Latin girl that cut up her boyfriend in the shower and like cut his dick off and stabbed him like 50 times? I have no idea. You know what I'm talking about? Jody Arias. There you go. Oh, she she should Jody probably. Jody Arias. She's. Oh. She Put is. Her, you could. You could easily argue she's more evil than Eileen. You she's, know, uh, Casey. Casey Anthony's up yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, of course. Casey Anthony's up there. Fucking Jody Arias, Griselda Blanco, and then tell me about this Hungarian bitch. Is this the, the search you just did? Yeah. Who is the most brutal woman in history? You say it. Uh, Elena Kuzku, uh, the wife of dictator Susu. Susu. Nikolai Kuzku was the most hated woman in all of Romania. For over 40 years, the couple ran a double-headed tyranny. Yeah, tyranny. Romanian, uh, uh, th th that that was a t t brutal... T top rule. top 10 most evil female rulers in history. Okay. Let's see. Uh, before, t okay, 280, I don't know, AD, keep going, I don't care. 20 AD, keep going. Keep, keep going. going. Give me someone today. Oh, Jesus. Uh, that's also super old. Yeah, yeah, these ones don't count. No one knows them. Mary of Mary of England. The first is fifteen hundreds. We don't care. Don't care. Empress, yeah, it's fucking BC. Get yeah, out of here. Catherine, Dim that's another. Oh, the Medici's. Medici's. She's yeah. okay. That's her. That she was friends with uh, Michelangelo. Yeah, in Florence, Italy. What did she do? Make that a little bigger, Zolo. Can we close this ad? It's not to mistake or define Catherine, the next one of our list, most female, evil female users in history. Pretty ambitious mom, considering that three of her sons were kings of France and two daughters were married to one. Ooh. Not to mention she had five children more in her marriage with the Duke of Orléans, later known as King Henry II of France. Hold on, what did she do? Just yeah, during her three do? decades of power, she ruled through her sons as regent and their closest advisor. The Nostradamus and oh. the Ruggeri brothers were her pals. Therefore, some associate her suspicious acts with the occult, although responsibility for starting the French wars of religion in 1562 cannot be attributed to her. Uh, the Huguenot massacre of St. Bartholomew can, despite, despite what some historians are saying in her defense, the woman was in charge through her son, uh, Charles at the time, more than 3,000 Protestants were killed that week, starting the night of the 23rd and 24th of August. The prosecution was spreading uh, through France late into the autumn. To make things worse, the massacre started only a few days after her youngest daughter's wedding. Um, it's not hard to imagine that, that a vicious mother planned all this 
and thus lured Huguenots to come to her doorstep. So there's nothing left to be said except that she was a product of selfish ambition, a cold and calculating woman who used her children as a tool in gaining power and legitimacy. And now let's see who else we have in our, all right. Yeah. So Because that's just, she's just a mom being she's, a mom. She, but she was very calculated is yeah. like what the story is. Isabella of Spain. Oh, wow. She fucking, she killed all the Jews. Did she? Yeah. Um, or the Muslims. Self-proclaimed purifier of Roman Catholic faith. Dude, who, she was a cunt. With her husband responsible for the expulsion <laughs> of more than 40,000 Jews who refused to convert to Christianity. I mean, you guys, you, you know, get on board. Or, <laughs> of course, they had the Pope's blessing since they were given the title the Catholic monarchs. More suffered the same destiny, uh, considering in 1492 the fall of Muslim kingdom of Granada to the Catholic monarchs. Okay. I so, think she's got it. She's got to be up there. She was a pretty evil fucking chick. Look at that face. Whoa! No Spanish accent's gonna turn that face. Nah. God damn. Yeah, that's real. That's you know what that is. That's a product of being inbred. Uh, inbred. Yeah. Is they the inbreds all look well, like you that? You see that in these homogenous societies, which usually are you usually are, are islands. That's why you see it like in the UK. You know, like you, really? Yeah, sure. Because you're like. You're isolated, right? So, like, if you're Ireland or you're England, you know, you're, you're even when you're meeting somebody who you're like, I don't know this person. It's like you share so many genetic traits because nobody leaves, right? It's not they're it's, like bulldogs. You just keep reproducing with the same bloodlines. Oh okay. my god! Go to the next. So, what you're saying? Wait, Jing. I don't know if I said that right. Uh, I'm going to take the under. Uh, Most celebrated Chinese actress. Oh, she was Mao's chick. Oh, Madame she Mao. She was Mao's chick. They fucking. Oh, she was hot as fuck, too. She was Mao's chick, and she was a capital cunt. Like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, she got. Oh, she killed herself. Cool. She did? Yeah. She killed herself in prison. She wasn't going to be put to death after she she supported the murder of the only thing better people. than is when they try to kill themselves and they don't yeah that's and then they one. go get hung with half a jaw oh because that's what happened to rubs pierre yeah is at the french revolution he was like fuck that you'll never take me alive and they're like you missed and he's like arr, arr, arr. <laughs> and then they still and then they still cut his head off fuck yeah. you know what they did to marie antoinette uh. they I'm, I'm going through a russian revel or a uh, french revolution thing right now mm -hmm. they were trying to get her find out where she was. The only reason she lived as long as she did because all her friends took care of her. Yeah. So they took one of her friends, beat her to death, cut her head on a, off, put it on a, on a pole and then hung it outside the cat, the castle where Marie Antoinette was. And they're like, give your friend a kiss. Wow. That's what people were like. Wait, let's see the rest of the, I, I got to finish the list and then we'll just, yeah. What's the rest of that list look like? Mao's chick. Is that her? Who, who are we at now? That's the, this is the same one. Oh, okay, okay. okay. Go, Next go one. Let's see, because now we're going in timelines. This lines. is the top two. So we're going to get... Okay. Rana Valona, uh, the queen of Madagascar. Uh, I saw that movie. It's not 1800s. that bad. 1800s. Uh, her... Okay. Um, she... Let's see. Oh, she's saying... Okay. She had people, 10,000 people died due to starvation disease. In addition, let's see, next to the line is some pretty gruesome method of execution that involves flaying your skin off while you're alive. Other messes which were equally horrible, although it seems that she didn't have a good relationship with her in-laws, <laughs> including her husband, considering her death, uh, his death at age 36 and shortly after her coronation, one can assume that she has done her dirty work as well. Her former lover is neck speared because he didn't want to do the ridiculous test of faithfulness. Holy shit. Which included swallowing and throwing up chicken skins. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. And she lived to be she lived to eighty three. She lived a full life. <laughs> she lived to eighty three? Yeah. Oh, this is old okay. school. No, we don't care. Yeah. If it's AD, we don't care. Yeah. Well, I guess she I was guess everything's AD. Yeah. Oh, she's the number one. She's Wu number one. Zaytan. Yeah. Coolest female ruler on our list. Empress Wu. Oh, I saw a fucking documentary about her. You did? Yes. She was, uh, get the feet bound. She was, they were all about feet binding back then. 
Well, she did the things that you expect a dictator to do, that she had a secret police that carried out interrogations and quarter, uh, uh, tortures and killings of potential rivals. She's even responsible for the death of her son, as well as her daughter, who was strangled, believe it or not, by her. So she killed her own <laughs> kids. Um, yeah, that's that, yeah, that should put you up there. Yeah. Sadly, she doesn't get the press that like, yeah. Eileen Warnos gets. That's what I'm saying. Eileen's just famous. Why don't they make movies about this? This is a pretty cool movie. Yeah, like that. You, there's so many movies about evil dictators. They should do because I'm telling you, uh, I, this is what made me think about this. Is I'm watching the um, Truman Capote doc. I started watching it. I can't watch it. Yeah, it's not a doc. It's a movie. It's called Swans or Feud. It's on Hulu. Swans or Feud. No, it's called Feud, but okay. it's called Feud. But it's swans are all over it. He had five women, four women who were socialites in New York high society in like the 50s, 60s, and he wrote an expose on them. He was best friends with all of them. They all were getting cheated on by their mans. They all had all this drama in their lives. And Truman Capote didn't have any real inspiration anymore. So he decided to do a Vanity Fair article, not using their names, but telling their stories. And it destroyed his relationship with them. It ruined him and it ruined a lot of their lives. And one of them is fucking one of the hottest chicks ever. Really? Oh my God. Uh, Her name was Babe Polly. And it was his best, best friend. I started watching it because I was like, this will be cool. Uh, I always wondered about Truman Capote and Cold Blood, and I knew he was a socialite. He had this like Andy Warhol thing about him. So wait, this is also... This hey, is a, Polly, look at her. This is a different movie than the Capote movie that came out a it's, few years ago? It's Because there's, there's a big... There was a famous they one. They did like five... R- really? Like, yeah, they did. But this guy that plays Capote is amazing. But I started watching it, and then I realized I can't watch it anymore because I don't like Truman Capote. I don't like him. He makes me really uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. I hate his energy. Yeah. His energy was like, I, he tr- they trusted him and then he sold them all the river and then he played the victim because yeah. they didn't want anything to do with him anymore. Yeah. And they were all just chicks that were bad bitches who were married to powerful men who, who they were like, they all got cheated on like in crazy ways. Mm-hmm. I mean, this girl, babe, Polly, her husband was fucking the, uh, mayor's wife. Oh, and Jesus. The, I know her husband ran CBS, ran CBS. Yeah. He was fucking the mayor's wife and the mayor's wife wanted him to get caught. So she rolled in and let him fuck her on her period and bled all over babe Polly's bed. And then was like, good luck cleaning it up, bitch and left Jesus. Uh, And so who were the swans? Look at how beautiful babe Polly is. Oh, by the way, this is what I was thinking. So this is my thought. So all these women are fucking amazing actresses. Demi Moore's in it. Mm -hmm. Demi Moore plays one of the most, the post. She's great. One of, plays one of the most evil women in history, uh, Ann Woodward. Ann Woodward shot her husband in the face. Truman Capote outed her in an article, and uh, Ann Woodward killed herself, took cyanide, because she didn't want to deal with the pressures of high society. But Demi Moore's in it. I didn't even realize it was Demi Moore. Naomi Watts is in it. Um, uh, Isn't that Chloe? Th- S- Chloe Sevigny. Yeah. The all these women are just amazing actresses and they do such a great job. And in a weird way, and I say this because it's National Women's Month, but you have all these great actresses that aren't getting the hot, sexy roles because they're yeah. they're aging and none of them have had work. None of these women have had work. Yeah. But they're so fucking good in this. I was like, yo, what are some great women in history that these women can hit out of the fucking park? Because they're great at they do it for men. Yeah. Like Sean Connery was acting until his 80s. But for, for women, they don't. So then we, we get one of them to do fucking bad bitch movie yeah they did it with eileen warnos it was a great movie Mm. more bad bitch movies Mm. i think bad bitch movies all right well that's a good way to wrap up women's our our salute to women our salute to women listen we wouldn't be here without you ladies thank you for everything you've given for us you look at great moms like uh like the kelsey's mom raised two fucking great kids yeah you look at our moms our moms our wives are moms our wives are moms we love women and we just wanted to celebrate you in the best way we know we did it in our own way yes so we'll see you next week (laughs) bert and tom tom and bert one goes topless while the other wears a shirt. Tom tells stories and Bert's the machine. There's not a chance in hell that they'll keep it clean. Here's what we call Two Bears, One Cave.